Hello and welcome to another episode of me painting. <laughs> Not sure why I just did that with the brushes. It was a bit dramatic. <laughs> I don't even really use that many brushes. Anyway, here we are, another episode, another day, another pencil case of gouache paints, which I'll put over there. I'll come back to that. And uh, a palette of watercolors, watercolors and a bit of white blob of white gouache and I might go into with the gouache I'll see how the painting goes what I tend to do now is uh, I'll paint what I can with the watercolours and then I'll usually use the gouache to darken things and improve things to be honest it's just the method the method that I use now for doing this so uh, today I've been working on this portrait um, for someone I work with and uh, it's coming on nicely actually it's funny when when you're uh, doing a portrait and it looks like the person that you're painting it's kind of weird really anywho so how do you start something like this it's a bit complicated this one isn't it there's quite a lot going on um so what i tend to do these days is uh i don't gen generally draw much but if you wanted to draw, you could sketch in like a bridge and maybe the, sh the overall shape. I'm quite open to what happens when I'm painting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of crimson. A little bit of this blue. I think it's cerulean blue. Crimson and cerulean blue and a bit of white. I'm just going to uh, get this started. So it's about there. <laughs> so I can roughly, I'm using a uh, grey card, it's just a uh, cheapy uh, card that I got. So I tend to either use this grey card or I'll use um, my sketchbook. <laughs> I probably need to make another video on what I use. Because the problem is, things change all the time. Well, not much has changed. My rule is new. <laughs> Where is it? There it is. Da da da. Bendy ruler, and it's brand new. So I could use that actually. Just above six. <laughs> Just trying to uh, get this all set up ready, so it's about there. Just using little up, 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 push, pull down, pulling down my strokes like this. Okay, I'm pulling down. And it kind of fades away as it dries. Which is alright. It's alright. If it works for us, it's good. So I think I'll do that. And then uh, it's quite straight, isn't it? Here, so we can start throwing that in. I'm just going to put it out of the way. So I can uh, start throwing paint down. Let me get some of this brown, this is some uh, burnt umber, burnt umber and a bit of crimson in there, probably good, yeah, I would say that is good, and we can uh, start messing around with that. It'll kind of fade away. It'll fade. This is our um, underpainting, really. This is what, it's the underpainting. Because underneath, we can do all this building up. And then, uh, when we're adding the details, we've got something in the background. I 
I'm sort of mixing this up a bit. I'm throwing some blue in and uh, some crimson in. Mix it up a bit. And it should dry pretty quick, really, because it's so hot. <laughs> it is really hot. It's been so smokingly hot. We haven't had any, well, I say we haven't had any rain. It actually rained not that long ago. If you're in America, not sure what it's like out there, but we've been getting uh, hot weather every day. And which is, we're not really used to it, to be honest. We get like the odd um, hot spell, but we don't get it the way it's been, not normally. So it's been a bit of a shocker. So uh, what I'm doing here, the reason why I sort of mix in the colours a little bit, it just adds a bit more interest to the background rather than just one solid colour. It gets a bit boring if you uh, just do one solid colour. So I'm going to get some white. Because that sky is very, very bright, isn't it? Oh, you can't see. <laughs> Look at that, it's so bright. And it's like that sometimes if um, you're out and about and the sky is like a, just a one solid colour. It's just solid and the clouds, which I think it, that day it was just solid cloud. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little bit of blue and blue, a little bit of blue and a little bit of I'm gonna start pulling in this make sure we get this sort of shape though because it kind of goes down doesn't it, it goes down and then uh, and then it goes back up again. I'm uh, using my photo of, as reference. So I'm not going to do it completely the same. Nothing wrong with doing that, but mind you. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do with this portrait I'm working on at the moment. Mixing the colours and getting it as close as I can. It's, it's a real challenge, but it is amazing when it works. It takes a bit of time to mix colours, I have to admit. But you get used to it and then you, when you're asking your <laughs> golden questions of uh, is it is it light enough? <laughs> is it dark enough? Is it redder or bluer? <laughs> I tend to ask those questions. I tend to ask myself, is the, is the tone right? Some colours though, um, I think it's from practice. I just mix it straight away and it amazes myself. It amazes myself. I amaze myself every time I do that. <laughs> so I'm like throwing paint on and it just goes bing and it's correct and I'm like whoa I got that spawn I'm now the master of colour mixing and then I'll try and mix another colour and I mess it up <laughs> never mind it's good to have those moments of amazing I'm amazing and then oh no I'm not <laughs> still working on it uh, here we go so this is quite light here I've gone a little bit too, uh, a bit too red because it's quite blue. It's quite cool here. There we go. Yeah, when it started raining earlier, I was like, "What are these drops?" water droplets falling out the sky. 
I haven't seen these in so long. I can't remember what they are. I'm just going to use my finger just to soften that edge. Okay. I think I'll just do this. Just spinning my brush. It just uh, softens that bit a little bit. That's quite all right. Just washing my brush. I tend to use this one brush all the time. <laughs> I just don't seem to need loads of brushes these days. Gonna get some brown. There's a bit of brown and a little bit of red in this side. And this comes to about there, I think. I think it does. And that goes there. Got the bridge. Something like that. And like I say, it doesn't really matter if we don't get it the same. We're just practicing, really. So... Now, I think I want to start blocking in the... Uh, just show you. I want to start blocking in this grassy bit that comes down. And then I can see where the bridge is and then I'll start painting that in. Got a bit of a yellowy, not quite that brown, probably sap green. Sap green in there, yeah, that's probably about right. So we've got some yellowy, sap greeny. I have that bit of grass there. So that will probably go to the, and then just go down like that. Because we've got the bridge to put in. And then that comes out, sort of like that. So when you're doing um, planes of land, say you've got this, let me just get a bit more sap green and Throw a bit of yellow ochre in there. So when you're doing a, a like this plane of land that goes down, let me show you the photo again. This that goes down, you want your brush strokes to follow that line. You'll notice in like a lot of the uh, master painters, their brush strokes are. Are used to mold. They used to mold around things to create the illusion of shape and depth and three dimension. I notice when I, I've copied quite a lot of uh, <laughs> pictures, and the, probably the artist that I've copied the most will be Van Gogh, and uh, you know, his a uh, obvious. Um, obviously specifically placed his brush strokes to create the illusion of shape and it works works really well I mean I can't think of uh, anyone better <laughs> to do that kind of effect than uh, Van Gogh I'm sure there are people that could do it as well but I guess I, uh, I'm, a, I'm such a fan of uh, Van Gogh that <laughs> when I look at his work, I'm like, yes, that's better than uh, everyone else's. <laughs> so I'm moving on to the bridge now. So we've got a bit of our shape for where the bridge is. Um, I've got this. I've got some... I think I've got a bit of black on the palette. I'll use a bit of black and brown and I'll start blocking this in, this bridge. So the bridge is at actually an angle when I look at it. It goes and 
down. Kind of like there. Let's block that in, and then it's got a round, rounded. Like that. And that kind of goes to about there. Something like that. And then at the base, I'm just going to get some of this uh, burnt sienna. One of the colours I've started using a lot burnt sienna. I really have started using burnt sienna a lot. I do tend to go in stages of using a certain colour more and more. Strange, really. Burnt sienna. And over this side of the land is quite burnt sienna -y actually. So that's uh, all sort of this way. Sort of like that. That kind of comes out and then goes down. Kind of goes like that. Back there. Could do with a bit of a uh, bit more of that wash, wishy washy colour come down here. Good thing about all this, it reactivates with water. <laughs> So you can kind of blend colour into it. Okay, that's looking all right. Now I uh, use this bluey, uh, purpley colour in the water. Now I think this is a bit of light, a bit more of that colour. Not sure if that's a magenta -y red. I'm not sure what that is. Mm -hmm. I like it. Got some hot glue in there. Some hot glue in this. Okay, quite like that, just to keep this quite soft in here, because it is quite soft when you look at the uh, picture. It's darker than the, uh, the water, but it's not. Might get a little bit of the uh, burnt sienna and sap green and put that in there. Let's see how that looks. It's not bad, it's not quite right though, it probably needs a bit of. Need a bit more of that burnt sienna. We've got a load of trees around here as well. Um, that's okay. It goes along there. Got trees here. I've got a bit of a few sort of trees there. Um, we need to really darken the bridge. To create this watery effect, we've got, so if you have a look at that, you can see that the bridge goes. And there's like a uh, reflection in the water. Oops, just painted on it. <laughs> so I'll wet my brush. I'll get some brown, brown and black mix. I'll throw a bit of red in it. Hmm, blue in it. Cool things down a bit in that water. 
So we've got this coming down, we've got that going into there. And it sort of goes around like that. Then we've got some more of the uh, this sort of cover for the water. <laughs> You'll notice this is um this is like a hybrid between a watercolor painting and uh, sort of like an acrylic painting or oil painting. It's almost. So it, it, it's just the the way. The way it is. <laughs> Start off like this with the watercolours and then I'm going to attack it with the uh, gouache and kind of uh, use um, oil painting techniques. See, you kind of get the best of both worlds in a way. In a way. <laughs> I'm just going to turn this around a, a second just to have a look at it. Because my circular stroke's best this way. How does that look? It's a bit shiny. <laughs> Can't really see. Right, I think what I'll do now is I'm going to paint in them two little people with this brush. This is a Cotman brush. And the people are kind of a bluey purpley colour. So I'll get some of this ready colour, whatever it is, I'm not actually sure, and blue, I'm getting a white, right, we'll see how that looks, so we've got a couple of people back here, I need a bit of area to lean, <laughs> uh, there's a person there, The person. I'm going to separate them slightly, just so I've got a bit of a, a bit, bit of a uh, silhouette going on. So there's a couple of people there. There's actually a post there as well. So we'll use the same colour to create that. Okay, so I've got a uh, effect that there's a couple of people there, <laughs> way off in the distance. Right, now, what shall I do? Oh, it's a bit of brown, oh, that's useful. There's a little bit of brown gouache here, which I can use. Especially if I throw a bit of brown. What I might do is put some I'm gonna put a little bit of gouache on my palette. I've already got some black on there. I think that red that I've been using must be must be this one. The uh schmink. Oh no, it's not. <laughs> Maybe it is, I'm not sure. Now we need a yellow for that um, slant, so I'll just put a little bit of uh, this cad yellow gouache out as well. And I want a little bit of the, the blue gouache. And I can make my darks using that blue and brown. It all makes sense, kind of. <laughs> I think there's something, oh, no that'll do. That'll do for now anyway. We'll see what happens. So we've got some blue and brown, brown and blue. I'm gonna get a bit of that red actually, throw that in there. 
So I've got um, a bit of blue and a bit of brown. And I'm going to start putting this on this uh, bridge. I really want to uh, darken this bridge actually. So the um, gouache is opaque and you'll notice as it goes on it's a uh, quite strong you could consider <laughs> the watercolour part almost like the drawing of everything and then you can come back and do this get some black there's a real dark dark just to get that edge Okay, now what have we got? Mm -hmm. I quite like that. That's looking not bad, not bad. Uh, I'll throw my brush in amongst this watercolour. See what happens. Yeah, I like it. It's just, just everything's going black. <laughs> So let us use let's use a different brush. Oh yeah, I found this brush today. Let's let's have uh, have a go with this one. When I was a uh, when I was uh, tidying up a bit, <laughs> so I get some uh, yellow and green, some yellow and green. Probably need a bit of yellow ochre in this. the white yellow ochre yellow and white so I'm thinking about this area thinking about the uh, grassy bit I'm going to create some like shapes using my brush using my brush strokes like I was saying earlier using the brush strokes to come down There is actually um, quite a lot of different colours in amongst this. There's like greens with uh, browns in there, there's greens with a bit of red in there. which goes along there and there is some quite dark bits uh, maybe there's a mole that's popped up there and gone whoops <laughs> Ooh, this is not where I wanted to go where's that field that I found last time <laughs> Let's 
Some more yellowy bits. I think it's a bit of a... I'm going to get a bit of red in with my colour now. Red in with it. Red, a bit of the green. So what that looks like. Yeah, that's interesting. So we'll just put that in here and there. I notice there's areas that are sort of reflecting there, so I put those bits in. So what else can we uh, see? I'm just going to create another version of this colour, the yellow. Put some of that on there. So you can really go for it like this. Really play with colour. Have all kinds of different colours in here. Maybe there's an area that's quite dark there is on the uh, picture it goes quite dark here bit there as well okay now contrast of this picture <laughs> is the uh, Gonna, uh, gonna soften this a little bit. Okay, I think that's all right. Yeah, the contrast of this picture is just light here and then quite dark here because the sun was um, because of all the trees, I think, and the sun just breaks this area, and it was so misty. It was a strange day, actually. Good day for the camera though. I think there's something else I might do before I start throwing on more colour. <laughs> Let's get this little brush again. I'm going to get a bit of the dark in with this blue colour. So I can see like a fence that goes all the way along. So I think I start here. that goes there and then there's a uh, and now this is going into a bit more detail <laughs> I'm trying to uh, add more to my uh, paintings for YouTube now because I think you'll be uh, People that have never watched this channel before, or people that have, will notice that I'm trying to do a little bit more. I don't like that one. It's okay. I need a brush. I'm going to use this. I've just cleaned it a bit. Get rid of that a bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well done. Right, now I wanted to uh, get a bit of this darkish colour. I was going to throw in this tree. Need a bit darker than that. See them? <laughs> I've been painting with oils uh, this morning and I got onto this and I'm not I'm not expecting it to go dry but it does. 
I mean, the good thing about this is you can reactivate the paint. Uh, the annoying thing about the oil, especially at the moment, and uh, I probably should have put my palette in the fridge, but I got to my palette this morning after painting last night on it, and it was totally uh, dry, totally dry. Couldn't believe it. Paints never dry that fast. Okay, so there we have a little bit of a bush on that end. Looks quite good. It is picking up a little highlights here and there. Well, probably should add it. I just noticed that this is looking a bit weird, so I'm just going to do that. Right, let's get a bit of this white. And if you uh, have had the chance to watch my interview with uh, Nathan Faux about painting, something he said in it is he likes to use a bit of the cadmium yellow. He said he used cadmium yellow deep with his white to make it warm because white on its own is, looks cold. If you haven't watched it yet, check it out. It's, it gives out a lot of information. <laughs> and uh, it's very, uh, very knowledgeable, so definitely worth listening to. Okay, so we've got a bit of light there. I think I want a bit of light here. So I don't want to go too crazy with this light because it's only in certain areas. So we've got that sparkle there. Now, while we've got it, I might as well. Because there's a sparkle here. There's like a sparkle down here as well where the light's sort of hitting. Might as well use this for this as well. I think it'll work quite well for this like water line here. You can always run your finger across it to soften it a bit. I think that works quite well. And we can bring it to a darker. I'm going to get a bit of darker colour on it for this bit. So you're trying to keep your uh, strokes straight. They don't tend to work if they're not. <laughs> you're sort of thinking straight lines, even though you're doing like other stuff. <laughs> Um, what else we got? We've got like a bit of a greenish tint on the top of this, haven't we? So that's, uh, that's probably a little bit too yellow. So let's get some yellow ochre in that. That's again, it's a bit too much. It's funny because you look at it on the brush or on the palette and you think, wow, that looks really dull put it on the painting and it zings <laughs> so that's yeah that's better dulled it down a little bit don't want it to be too too strong for us don't want it to be too strong for us no. get a little bit of dark for that area because this is quite dark here A little bit of the brown will be nice, yeah, that's better. Because it's got quite a brown look to it. I'll uh, use this, carry this on along there. Okay, I'm liking that. Now we'll, uh, I'll use this colour to dance around in here.
There's a bit of a uh, area there that's got a nice sort of autumn look to it. I think it was. I think it was winter actually when I did this picture. When I think about it, I think it was. It's hard to remember because we we did go through. <laughs> I don't know if global warming's uh, actually happening, but we did have quite a warm winter. Then, anyway, it was a few years ago now. It's thundering outside now. So I can. Uh, Bring that down like that. <laughs> I hope all this outside noise isn't coming up on camera. There's people shouting and all sorts. <laughs> hey, don't you know I'm trying to paint in here? At least the ice cream van hasn't come around. <laughs> That used to be a thing of all my videos, there's always an ice cream van. Uh, I've just mixed a bit of a dark colour. Just to, uh, I felt like this isn't quite dark enough. Something like that. And then I'll uh, just sort of wash that in I want to have a bit of a I like it with a bit of a purple tint to it Something like that. Don't want to go too crazy with that. <laughs> I'll end up uh, painting forever. So just uh... now we've got a bar that goes across there as well. I'm going to oh, this is what I want to do. You always get these little like peninsulas in the water. If that's what they're called. Just wanna do that. Keep that quite dark there. Okay, yeah, I quite like that. So I might use my tiny brush again. <laughs> the tiny brush is back. And uh, I'm going to start putting in... Putting in that post. There's a, you can see a post on my picture. It's really, uh, it's really fine. So I'm going to turn my page around. So I can uh, do the post towards me. Wait, let me think. <laughs> Dangerous times, thinking. <laughs> so it goes down this way. So let's go. Like that. It's probably fallen in the past or something. I might do a little, you can see the darkness under it, so I might just see if I can uh, do that and then, and then maybe, there we go. So I've got that post in now. And now, what I'm thinking is, 
I could uh, start adding some of these like sticks and twigs and stuff using my brush this brush that's been is um, number three Cotman brush <laughs> it's like one of the old Bob Ross liners but it's a bit different works good though okay here we go so we've got this this trees so we can uh, just put a few of these marks in Okay, yeah, so that gives it a little bit of interest. I think I'll just do that there. And now I need to put these um, bigger trees in. I'm going to kind of leave this mass because I quite like that. I don't, I don't know about you, I quite like the way that's looking. Um, so if I put some trees in front of it, it should make it look a bit better. In fact, there is something in the water there. <laughs> the problem is when I get going I don't stop so best 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 stop <laughs> just rubbing that into that um yeah that'll do so we need to put some trees in where's the um That one, this brush might do it. So we want them to be quite dark. And I've, I've been looking at trees a lot. <laughs> I'm one of those weird people that go in the forest and just stare at the trees. I haven't got to the stage of hugging them yet. <laughs> Maybe one day. So... There we go, there's a tree in there. So, so I've got a choice really, I could, uh, I could really go for this, let's go for this. Yeah, let's a bit more green in that colour. So there's quite a lot here, so I've just noticed that trees should be further this way. <laughs> oh well, never mind. We'll have to uh, we'll have to forgive that tree. Well, in fact, we'll bring it down here. Look at that magic. I'm just going to put trees wherever I like. I do want one there though. So I'm just going to pull in a few branches and stuff. So I've seen people do this before, where they just roll their brush. So I use that as well. You just sort of roll it like that. And you can get all those millions of little branches that are uh, really hard to paint. They just sort of roll a dry brush around. I do want to paint more trees in there. It's 
good for practice, isn't it? Good for practice, for tree pra tree painting practice. When there's a ton of trees, you've got to... Uh, Don't forget to load your brush though. You start enjoying this and then uh, nothing comes off your brush. <laughs> I'm gonna bring this down, down here. mass in uh, some trees as well. Over here there's just loads. So we'll just create a bit of a mass. Okay. Well now what I'm gonna do, because I can see a bit of light hitting some of these trees. So I'm going to get a bit of that white and in with the brown. Just to hit a few of these that are getting the light. Not all of them are. Some of them. We can break this up as well by doing that. Okay, and then uh, I can throw in a little bit of. Uh, oh, that's too bright. And a little bit of the. Uh, a bit of this at the base. Goes, it goes quite dark again. Just freaking up a few little uh, grassy effects, and I think we are about done really for this fun little picture. So yeah, so if you want to uh, have a go at painting something like that, I'm pretty sure you could do it, no problem. I'm still looking at areas I can improve. <laughs> but I always do that and I always think to myself, you know, at some point you've got to say this, this is what this painting is. And you have to accept it. Just giving it in the red there. <laughs> That'll dry, dry away a little bit. I wouldn't really see it. But yeah, um, I think this is uh, pretty much done. If you imagine that it's cut off like that. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah. So thanks very much for watching this episode. This was a uh, fun painting for me to do because I wanted to paint this for ages and I'd never got around to it, but here we are. We've had a go and uh, I've really enjoyed doing it. 
So thanks very much for watching this episode, and I will see you at another one. Cheers, bye.